John Michael Goodyear got the story wrong. So did Sabina Horsfelder, but she was very humble. And when I corrected her that the story actually has three parts, the discovery, the dismissal of the signal, and then what's happened since it was dismissed in the last four years, Sabina Horsfeld is very excited about what's actually happening in Europe and if we do find information about an extraterrestrial civilization. Good one. Sadly, and I understand why, and I'll go into it, John Michel Goodyear got it wrong. Hey everybody, peace, love and understanding. I had a very bad day yesterday because of you, some of you. Thank you very much for all the people who supported me. But there were a number of people calling me clickbait fake professor and I lied. The story is real and John Michel Goodyear got it wrong. The story comes in three parts. You're not paying attention in class. Sit down and listen to this again. How many times do I have to tell you this? The search for an extraterrestrial technological signature is fascinating. It started when this organization called SETI, you've all heard of them, not government funded, but privately funded in the US, changed in the 1990s. Originally, they were looking for aliens waving hello. But after 40 years of finding nothing, they changed to actually listen to all the frequencies possible. But they needed some software to actually process the signal. And you did it with SETI at home. The SETI at home data was open source. I've told you this before, but pay attention in class. <laughs> An Italian statistician found five candidates. He's not a radio astronomer, he is a statistician. But those candidates were little signals that might be, only might be, possible technological signatures that you and I found in our screensaver. The next thing that happened is along came Yuri Milner and Breitzer Listen. They poured lots of money in buying telescope time. The two telescopes that they bought time on were Green Bank in West Virginia and Parks it's down there, in Australia. Both old, but very good, movable, steerable dishes back in the mid-2000s. And they started looking at the five candidates that the mathematician in Italy had identified. Breitzer Listen stuck with the name candidates. BL, Breitzer Listen, candidate one is the signal that we've been talking about. BLC1 was very low level and they used the Parks dish in Australia to listen to what they could. They wrote a piece peer-reviewed paper to say it was so low it might actually be human interference. And that's the end of John Michael Goodyear's research back in 2019 and the publication of I accept why he did it. It's the only peer-reviewed piece of paper that you can search on the internet. That's not the damn story. John. <laughs> I totally accept and I've read it a million times published a paper saying that BLC1 was so low that they couldn't confirm it was a technological signature. It was more than likely human interference. But that's not the story. First of all, you conveniently missed out how the candidates were found. Really fascinating by an Italian statistician. You stopped telling the story when Breakthrough Listen correctly said that their signal was so low level it might be interference. End of your story. No, no, no. It's what happened next that I am trying to bring to you. A whole new generation of phased array, steerable and networkable radio telescopes came online after Breakthrough Listen dismissed the signal from the little parks dish. I mean, it's a good dish, but there's a better way of verifying if it's true and finding other technological signatures uh, today in 2024. And the people who are doing that is an organization based in the Netherlands, but are international, and they're called Astron. They've no doubt got multiple sources of funding, but the biggest source of funding that I've discovered is from the Horizon Fund, which is EU science money. People even wrote to me and said the EU doesn't have any money. Um. Do you remember Margaret Thatcher in her handbag going, I want to pay less, the EU's costing Britain too much? Of course the EU have money. The Horizon Fund is one of the richest science funds in the world. Britain 
post-Brexit has missed out on it. Hopefully under a Labour government, we'll rejoin the Horizon Fund. Good for British science investigating bendy bananas. And you can hear that I'm really angry. If you just want to come in the comments and say, Holland's got egg on his face, as somebody rudely said, or clickbait fake professor, please unsubscribe and go away. <laughs> But thank you, all the people who are actually sticking around and supporting me. So let's get on to part three, the bit that John Michael Godier ignored. So thanks to Astron, an enormous global radio telescope organisation, somebody wrote to me and said, they don't exist. Well, um, Google? <laughs> Astron in the Netherlands built this amazing telescope. It's called LOFAR, the Low Frequency Array LOFAR. It has the unique world ability to pick up very low frequency radio signals from the early universe, actually before light existed. It's brilliant, but its second claim to fame is that it's phased array. These antennas don't move, they can electronically steer them to take surveys all over the sky. Now that concept grew throughout Europe, and now the LOFAR network looks like this everywhere from Britain to Germany to France and the Netherlands. And from the early days of building LOFAR and networking all these other countries' low frequency arrays to Together, Astrum developed this multiplexing of radio telescope systems, which was the precursor of the world's best telescope, which is called SKA, the Square Kilometer Array. And Breakthrough Listen are using that today to still look for candidates of technological signatures, thanks to Astrum. Hang on, none of what I've just said was in John's video. Why? <laughs> so the networking capabilities, the low frequency capabilities, and very much the phased array steering capabilities is the best tool to find a technological signature. That's what's happening today. LOFAR, in fact, is being rebuilt in the Netherlands, and that network in Europe is being upgraded because we want more information about ET and our universe. And remember, Ney says, I personally interviewed Dr. Andrew Simeon, principal investigator at Breakthrough Listen, who says BLC1 is still of interest and there are other targets. And new telescopes such as the Square Kilometer Array and how it's networked together, mentioning Astron that he is actually associated with is the way that we, in 2024, will hopefully find and confirm an extra terrestrial technological signature. World governments and religions are gearing up for that revelation. So that's the real story. We as humans are on the cusp of an amazing story because the truth is out there.